Good day. The purpose of this video is to answer a question that get, that has been asked for, well, certainly more than a decade, which is how much range do you actually get out of a full electric vehicle in extreme cold? And a recent cold snap in Calgary, Alberta, which is where I live, provided us with the opportunity to run the test we're about to show you. 353 kilometers. How exciting. What I've done to make this again fair is in addition to charging it up at my office uh, in a temperature controlled setting, which as you can see is 14 degrees Celsius, is that I've also set the limit to charging to be the maximum that the battery can do, which most people will tell you you shouldn't do. Most people will tell you you should leave it uh, at a stop charging about 80%. But I've charged this all the way up so we can see what we get in this extreme cold. So it's freaking cold. So let's see how many kilometers I actually get out of this full tank of electrons. We'd like to interject for just 10 seconds to ask you to click like if this is the kind of thing that you like. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks, back to the show. Now, this is the short version of the 25 minute video that went over every kilometer we drove, storing it at night, parking it periodically outside at Costco and a few other places for a few hours. Pretty much normal driving. It was 60% city, 40% highway, as I live just outside of uh, the major city. Now there's a couple of things to say before we get to the actual results. The first is if you wanna see the whole longer video, you can click the top right hand corner right now and uh, you can see exactly how we drove. You'll see that there were no jackrabbit starts. You will see that didn't pound the brakes. You will see that we didn't exceed 70 miles an hour or 114 kilometers an hour on the highway. And in the city, we adhered to the speed limits. We did not plug the vehicle in at home. And specifically, my garage is a poorly insulated attached garage with the bedroom above it, which means that it is warmer than some garages, but because it's not heated, uh, it certainly wasn't warm. The vehicle uh, for each of the three days in the test showed that it was averaging somewhere around minus 15, which I think is minus, uh, uh, minus one or two or three Fahrenheit. All right, so let's get to the results. And you can see that on my 402 kilometer battery, that I can only charge the 354 kilometers, that in extreme cold weather, I get about 150 kilometers. Now, that sounds cranky. The, the fact is I only need probably 50 or 60 kilometers on any given trip. Uh, most trips I need uh, 22 kilometers. That's my distance from work to home. So 154 is way more than I need. So this is still just fine. But there's no way I could run this as my only vehicle. If I had only one vehicle, it would be a plug-in hybrid so that I can go anywhere without limitations, which is especially important in these crazy cold weather conditions. Oh, and before you say, oh, there's something wrong with this guy's car, he should take it in, I have. It's been into Tesla twice to have them look at it, and they say, nope, this is just what it, this is just fine. This is what it's supposed to get. And if you're thinking, wow, something just must be wrong beyond the vehicle, it's, there's just no way. I know people with, with battery electric vehicles and other Teslas, and they don't make that claim. Well, that's because one of the great benefits of having an electric car is you charge up at home and in the office, which means your battery is always full, which means most people will never know that the range is that bad in extreme cold. They're only driving five, 10, 20 kilometers at any given time, probably well in excess of 95% of the time. They won't even notice. I still just love my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus but it's unfair for Tesla fanboys to glorify it and say that it is perfect in every way and that there aren't any problems and it can't be improved in any meaningful way and that we don't need more chargers and so on and so forth. The vehicle has limitations. Now, fortunately, their limitations don't bother me very much. They don't affect my life in some gigantically negative way, but those limitations are real. And if you're like a friend of mine who wants to drive to Lake Louise from Calgary every weekend, he's going to have to buy himself a Lincoln 
plug-in hybrid because there's just no way, even with the extended range battery that Tesla offers, that he can get from Calgary to the mountains, have it sit all day, and then get all the way back to his house. It's about 550 kilometer round trip for him. And there's just no way that's gonna happen in cold weather. So a plug-in hybrid makes an awful lot of sense for somebody like that. I personally will never own a vehicle that isn't a plug-in. I like plug-in hybrids. I think there's a lot of market for them. I think they make a lot of sense. As far as manufacturing goes, they make less sense because you have the negatives of both systems. However, as a consumer, I don't care. A plug-in hybrid has eight years of warranty and I don't keep cars anywhere near that long. So I couldn't care less what goes wrong with it. And for the record, I've owned three plug-in hybrids and all of them work beautifully. No troubles at all. So if you like this uh, video, it'd be really great if you would click the uh, like uh, button below as it really helps us with the Google algorithm. And if you're interested in electric vehicles, the energy industry, high technology, things like that, please click subscribe because that's the kind of thing we talk about. Thanks.